only on Current TV. We are back with the power panel, another panel that I love. We've got Craig Crawford, of course, a political blogger at CraigCrawford.com and author of The Politics of Life. Laura Bassett is a reporter for The Huffington Post. Great to have you back. And Addy Stan is the Washington Bureau Chief of Alternet. Uh, it's great to have all of you back. So, first great topic. To uh, is Obama uh, a tough guy at this point, basically? Uh, mm -hmm. Yesterday, he goes and does a recess appointment of Richard Cardray for uh, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. On top of that, he's like, if that's not good enough, let me, uh, good enough, let me add three people to the National Labor Relations Board, also a recess appointment. Then today, he goes to the Pentagon. First time ever that a president has done a press conference at the Pentagon and basically says... I'm cutting your budget. You know, the this decade of, of wars is basically coming to an end, and I wanted to come and tell you right here at the Pentagon, which I thought was a really strong move. Uh, Craig, uh, am I seeing that wrong, or does that seem like a new, you know, emboldened president? Well, I hope he, he, he keeps his New Year's resolutions better than I do mine, because that's what this seems to be. Maybe Iowa energized him some, Chink, uh, sort of channeling those great days in Iowa back in 2008 when he was uh, sounded like a liberal and got all that liberal support. He's, he's, he's going back to the, that old well. I, I, I think this president has figured out finally that uh, this is what it takes to, to fire up his base, to show a little gumption and start fighting back and using the powers of his office to do these things, like the NLRB appointments. Uh, I mean, what's so crazy about the Republican diatribe against that thing is, I mean, they're, they're angry about things like the NLRB requiring employers to put to post the, the rights for employees, just post their rights, and, and, and they're calling that socialism. These are the kind of things he's got to highlight and fight back on, and not only the base, but I think a lot of middle American consumers out there, in the case of the Consumer Protection Board appointment, are going to rally to. Yeah, it's the National Labor Relations Board, and the Republicans are complaining that it's uh, helping labor too much. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it's supposed to do. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, Addy, as you look at this, do you get a sense that this might be a, a political move, that, you know, he knows that progressives win elections, uh, so, you know, when, when it's election time, all of a sudden he's a lot more progressive? Well, I mean, I think there's definitely a fair dose of that going on, and I think he might actually actually be a little fed up too. I mean, uh, with what he's been going through with the obstructionists, you know, in the the Tea Party Caucus of the Congress, which seems to be, you know, the minority that's sort of driving the whole obstruction agenda. But I mean, I do think that you know he he knows he's got an enthusiasm problem. You know, he knows that he's got these young voters who are hearing the siren call of, you know, Ron Paul's anti-war message. And, you know, he can't afford to have them drift away should Ron Paul decide to go third party. Um, he knows that at this point, if if uh, he looks, he if he looks like he's just trying to seat the guy who is going to protect consumers from you know bad actors in the financial sector, and the Republicans are saying, oh, he's not playing fair. I mean, he's going to look good by comparison. So yeah, it is yeah. all very smart. Yeah, no question about it. And progressives have been saying for three straight years now, fight them. You won't lose politically. You'll gain. So Laura, last question goes to you on this. You know, why did he wait so damn long when he finally stands up? You know, everybody's giving him credit for being strong, not just us, the whole press is. I think that his timing on this is, is brilliant, actually. I think timing it in between the Iowa caucus and New Hampshire, when all eyes are on Mitt Romney, all eyes are on Santorum and the talking points against Obama, for him to come out with these big, strong moves and pull the press away from the Republicans right now, I think it's an attention grab. I think it's a power move. He gets to position himself as a fighter for the middle class against an obstructionist Congress. And Republicans can't really complain about it without drawing attention to the fact that they've been dragging their feet on this. Uh, so he, I, I think he's, he's sort of grabbing at the media right now, and, and I think it's working. Yeah, absolutely. And I, look, you know, I think it took too long, but I'm glad he's doing it. I'm very, very glad that he's doing it. I think it's definitely the right move. Now, really quick, we have, don't have a lot of time for the second topic, but I do want to discuss it. Uh, it seems, again, here we go again, the Republicans turning to race, right? We mentioned Rick Santorum in the beginning of the show saying that, uh, you know, blah people take welfare. What the hell is blah people? Uh, you know what he means. And now look at Newt Gingrich. I'm prepared 
if the NAACP invites me, I'll go to their convention and talk about why the African American community should demand paychecks and not be satisfied with food stamps. God, it's so brazen. Craig, uh, have Republicans just stopped pretending that they're not racist and they're just like, yeah, 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 black people take your money? Yeah, I think they've gotten more brazen in the last few years. Ronald Reagan sort of started some of this by uh, going to places like Macon and quoting uh, Jefferson Davis and so on, and they've gotten a little more out front. I mean, but now will Newt Gingrich go to the NAACP and, and call Barack Obama a food stamp president, for example? I, I, I think that's a, one thing that he's been saying a lot lately that uh, is not just a dog whistle. I mean, humans can hear that one uh, when he starts <laughs> saying those kinds of things. And, and, then, and then when we look at South Carolina and what's going on on the Republican side, Jake, I mean, look at the numbers outside or the entrance polls uh, to the Iowa caucus, Romney lost 14% of the people who said they were very conservative. So there is a battle uh, for that vote among these contenders, his rivals, and it's on abortion and lots of other things, but one is to prove that you're gonna be the toughest candidate on blacks, uh, however you wanna put it, you know, and it's very passive aggressive. They say things that those of us who call them out on it, they say, oh, what do you mean? We didn't mean that. It's very passive aggressive, but right. we know what it means. Uh, Laura, real quick here, South Carolina, uh, does this help uh, people like Newt Gingrich in getting uh, white Republican voters in South Carolina? I would imagine that it would, you know. Uh, I th he's he's pulling some emotional strings here for for people. I, I think that racism has sort of become embedded, so embedded in the Republican rhetoric that they they don't even consider it racism anymore. They they see it as as sort of the, the normal way that, that things are. And uh, you know, with, with Ron Paul and the racist newsletters and and Santorum saying, you know, Obama, how can Obama support abortion rights when he's black and and pulling pulling race issues into into places where they shouldn't be. Uh, I think obviously it's resonating with with someone. Right. And and Addy, final word here. Um, are are they doing this thing on purpose? Oh yeah, they've gone from code straight to base the basis stereotypes in like zero to sixty. It's like you know, like <laughs> it's it's truly amazing, and it's and it, and it will work in certain areas like South Carolina. All right, Addie Stan, Laura Bassett, Craig Crawford. By the way, Craig, nicely done on that. It's not a dog whistle that humans can hear it now. <laughs> it was a great line. Thank you all so much for joining us. We really appreciate it.